All right, chapter eight, axial resolution. So what is resolution just in general? Resolution is the ability to image accurately. Um, obviously this is extremely important in diagnostic imaging, which better makes sense to you. Of course, why is it, why is it important? Because whatever's there, we want to tell the doctor that it is what it is. We don't want to guess. We don't want to see, you know, the blurry big, Bigfoot picture and say, oh, it looks like Bigfoot and it's not really Bigfoot. That kind of thing. If it's a tumor, it's a tumor. If it's a, you know, if it's a mass, if it's a cyst, if it's a, you know, whatever structure it is, we want to say definitely that's what it is. Any picture you take of your kids, do you want a blurry picture? No, you want the highest resolution possible. Same thing with TVs. It just makes the picture that much more pleasant and, and perfect. So axial resolution then is the ability of the system to display two structures that are very close together when the structures are parallel to the sound beam's main axis. Remember, whichever way that beam is going, then they're going to be basically front to back, okay? They're not gonna be straddling the line or making going across the line, that would be perpendicular. These are front to back, just like when I'm looking at you guys and I see um, Raquel and then Annette. They are front to back to my vision, which is looking to the back, from the front of the room to the back of the room. Um, the reflectors are positioned one in front of the other. Axial resolution answers then the question, what is that minimum distance that I can see those two structures front to back or parallel to that axis to still produce two distinct echoes, okay? In other words, the, as close as they can get to where they're still two separate objects. That's the idea. And this picture basically display, uh, shows what we were talking about a second ago the ability to separate structures parallel to the ultrasound beam. So if, if, if the beam is represented by, or the transducer rep represented by the thick blue line at the top, and again, you know, we're gonna learn later, ultrasound beams are naturally hourglass shape, but that's still going in the direction from top to bottom, and those blue dots are front to back to each other. That is axial resolution. And you know, your book has wonderful, wonderful examples of this, um, especially figure 8-2 on page 112. So the units is a distance because axial resolution, again, is that distance that those two structures can be from each other, the minimum distance, and still be two separate objects, Min millimeters, centimeters, whatever distance. It is determined by the spatial pulse length. Remember earlier we talked about shorter pulses improve image accuracy. So it would only make sense that that has to determine an accuracy or a resolution. So axial resolution is determined by the spatial pulse length. There's, learn these, these next names because I can call them any one of these and the registry will also call them the same. Um, axial resolution is also referred to as longitudinal, axial, range, radial, or depth resolution. Any one of these LARD, I guess acronyms, any letter put resolution behind it, it's done. And I'm going to ask you on the test, I might say I might use look for longitudinal as an answer. I might lose, look for axial, range, radial, depth, either one, because you're going to have to know that for the registry. It's very registry specific and important. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is axial resolution adjustable? Absolutely not, because a pulse is a pulse is a pulse. All right? That's my dog trying to get comfortable over there. So, excuse the sounds. Um, a pulse is a pulse is a pulse, all right? So we can't change the spatial pulse length. We already learned that. 
So therefore, absolutely not, it's not adjustable. Just, just know that. Ah, Kelly, let us review and understand, again, figure 8-2 on page 112. Remember, the little black dots are what's actually there. Then you have a low frequency probe and a high frequency probe. And, or just a low frequency sound wave. Or I guess I should refer to it as uh, a, a shorter pulse and a longer pulse. So you have a you have a longer pulse which is creating the more inaccurate image and the shorter pulse which is creating the the actual image or the more detailed image or the image that is actually correct. Remember just these are these are these are spatial pulse links we're talking about. I said frequency, please disregard that until further notice. So remember axial resolution is a distance. So what do you think a typical value for axial resolution would be? Large or small? Hopefully you answered smaller, much smaller, because we want to see things very close together and still see them as separate objects. We wouldn't want things five, six, seven centimeters apart still looking like one big blob, correct? So just think about the definition. Typical values for axial resolution are between 0.05 and 0.5 millimeters. Remember this is this is changed. You should have changed this in your book. Why is it less than in the book? Because technology is that much better or we can see things even that much closer together and still look like two separate objects. You don't have to remember, you don't have to, I don't want you to just know this, I want you to, I insist you understand it. And if you understand axial resolution, you'll understand the values and you'll understand why this is the way it is. So now we can answer the question, what is the relationship between the numerical value of the axial resolution and the image quality? And if you understand the definition and you understand the simple principles we just, we've been talking about, you'll get this. It's easy. Lower numerical values of axial resolution indicate a shorter pulse. Shorter pulses create more accurate images. Therefore, image quality is better with lower numbers. Because if I say axial resolution is one millimeter and axial resolution in another image is five millimeters. Of course, the lower number is going to be the better picture, which is going to have the shorter pulse because axial resolution is determined by shorter pulses or the spatial pulse length. So image quality is better with lower numbers. The mathematical formula for axial resolution or formulas is there then axial resolution in millimeters because that's a very small number equals spatial pulse length divided by 2. Okay, Spatial pulse length determines that axial resolution so whatever the spatial pulse length is I cut it in half. So if I say spatial pulse length is 10 millimeters what's the axial resolution? 5 millimeters simple as that. So the second formula says axial resolution in millimeters is equal to wavelength in millimeters times the number of cycles in the pulse divided by 2. Well where in the world did I get wavelength times number of cycles in a pulse? Anyone? That is the formula for spatial pulse length. So I would have to give you the wavelength and the number of cycles and you could figure that out and I ask you what's the axial resolution divided by 2 you're done simple as that remember I'm not gonna test you on the fact that I don't think you can do the math I want to see if you know the formulas so the math is not gonna be that hard um, now that's just in general in soft tissue which is specifically what we're interested in 
axial resolution then becomes that 0.77 should be millimeters times the number of cycles in a pulse divided by the frequency. I want you to just recognize that one. And I think I told you that in class. That, that one I will ask what's the, the formula for axial resolution in soft tissue versus the other ones above, I, I'll get you to, to do some sort of simple math. Um, so again, if you just understand it then and, and just grasp it, you'll be fine. What allows some transducers to have better, better axial resolution than others? Well, we already know that axial resolution is determined by the pulse length, uh, with shorter pulses providing improved axial resolution. Well, if then if a pulse is a pulse is a pulse, how does that work? Well, a short pulse is created two ways, less ringing and higher frequency. So who does that? Do we do that? No. We already, we already learned that we can't change that, right? It's not adjustable. Well, who does? All of these cats right here. Philips, GE, Siemens, ATL, Toshiba, Sonosite, Biosan. They're manufacturers. They do that. That's, it's part of the, the process of building a probe. So let's talk about less ringing. Uh, less ringing. A pulse is short if there are less cycles in the pulse. Just like a train is short if it has fewer cars. This is known as less ringing. Uh, transducer designers have, have developed uh, techniques to create pulses that have only two or three cycles. That is accomplished through a process called dampening. All right. It's, it's, it's like when I ring the triangle in class, the difference between I just let it ring and ring and ring and ring versus if I, if I hit it and then stop it with my hand. I'm stopping that, that ringing or I'm dampening that, that triangle. I'm creating less ringing. So I'm just taking cars out of the train. Uh, an electrical signal excites the crystal which then creates the, the pulse. Dampening reduces the ringing creating shorter pulses. So think less ringing equals fewer cycles. If I take cycles away, of course I'm going to have less ringing. Whoa. So let's talk about higher frequency. A pulse is short if each cycle in the pulse has a short wavelength. Just like a train is short if each car in the train is short. Remember the I have five cars in each train. The first train has cars that are two feet long, the second train has cars that are one feet long. They're both five cars long, but the one that have one that has one foot cars one foot cars is half the size. So remember we can shorten those wavelengths or 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 manufacturers have done that. Short wavelengths are characteristics of high frequency sound. Therefore higher frequency cycles have superior axial resolution. So think shorter wavelength equals a higher frequency equals shorter pulses. It's a simple straightforward principle. This is stuff that you've already learned. Uh, I want to cut off the piece of my brain that is doing all this overthinking. Well, I can't help you with that. But I can help you just by keeping this simple. It is what it is. I'm not going to make it difficult. I'm gonna t I want to test you on whether or not you know this stuff. Okay, And if you keep the principles in mind, you'll be just fine. So go ahead and review this. I'm going to cut it off from here and then I'm going to start a new video on chapter 9. Um, take your time with it. Break it down. It's very simple principles. Don't overdo it and you'll be just fine. Okay, You guys hang in there. You're doing wonderful.